Hello everyone, this is Bell's Books and we can be found online at abooks.com. So this week I will be bringing you the latest auction prices and some fun and new information uh, from 15 very popular children's books and some classic literature. So we'll just dive right in. The first book is The Adventures of Mickey Mouse. Now this is book one by Disney published in 1931 by David McKay. The estimated value for this book is between $5,000 and $7,500. The sale price of the book was $5,500. So Walt Disney got the idea of Mickey Mouse from his trained mouse that he once owned when he was young. Originally, he was going to name Mickey Mortimer. However, his wife Lillian didn't like it and she suggested Mickey, in full, Mickey Theodore Mouse. And Walt himself was actually the first voice of Mickey Mouse until 1946. So Mickey Mouse was the first cartoon character to ever actually speak in film. Um, his first appearance was in Steamboat Willie in 1928. The tune he whistles is from the song Steamboat Willie by Arthur Collins. His first feature film debut was in Fantasia in 1940. He's the first cartoon character to have his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which was added on November 18th in 1978, and he is currently ranked more famous than Santa Claus. The second book is Walt Disney's Bambi. This was published by Disney in 1949, and the, the publisher was actually the Golden Press and that's why they're referred to as the Golden Books. Now, this one is valued between $500 and $750. The sale price for the book was $1,040. So this is a 1949 Golden Book of the 1942 animation drama. This is a case where the animation or film was produced before the book version. The film was released by RKO Radio Pictures on August 13, 1942, and is the fifth Disney animated feature film. Bambi's actually based on the novel Bambi, A Life in the Woods by Austrian writer Felix Salton, the pen name of Sigmund Salzman. First published in German in 1923, Bambi was then later published in English in 1928. It became a best-selling selection of the Book of the Month Club. Walt recalled, I got excited about the possibility of animals and what we could do with them. It's actually a little known fact that Salton followed his first book, Bambi, with a sequel, though the sequel was never adapted for the big screen. Bambi's Children focuses on the adventures of Bambi's twin children. Salton wrote the sequel while he was living in exile in Switzerland, having been driven out of Austria by the Nazis. It was published in English before it was even published in its native language. So it was published in England in the United States, I'm sorry, in English in the United States in 1939. So the next book is The Little Fire Engine by Graham Greene. This was published in 1950 by Max Parrish. The estimated value is between $1,200 and $1,800. The sale price was two thousand dollars. In the spring of 1939, Green started his long-lasting love affair with Dorothy Glover. She was a theater costume designer who, under the pen name of Dorothy Craigie, illustrated children's books. See, Green at that time was the head of a publishing house, Air and Spottiswood. He agreed when Dorothy suggested that he write the books for children that she would illustrate. It was probably to avoid what he feared all his life, which was boredom. Um, and then you can even see this in his books. The little train runs away because he's bored to remain on a country branch line. And then Toby, the pony in the little fire engine, suffers from the same thing. So his children's books really show us how diverse an author he is. Most known for his books like Brighton Rock, The Quiet American, and his short plays and his stories. So, although he was talented, he never won a Nobel Prize. The fourth book is, And to Think I Saw It on Mulberry Street. 
This was the first Dr. Seuss book, and it was published in 1937 by the Vanguard Press. The estimated value for this book is between $5,000 and $7,500. The sale price for this book is $6,750. So 75 years ago, before Theodore Geisel or Dr. Seuss uh, rocked the culinary world with green eggs and ham, or before he even put a red and white striped top hat on a talking cat, um, he was stuck on a boat returning from a trip to Europe. So for eight days, he listened to the ship's engine chug away. Well, the sound got stuck in his head, and he started writing to the rhythm. Eventually, those rhythmic lines in his head turned into his first children's book, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. But he didn't have an easy time selling, you know, the story to publishers. It was actually rejected 27 times before it got published. The fifth book is A Dog's Tale by Mark Twain. This was published in 1904 by Harper and Brothers. The estimated value for this book is between $3,000 and $4,000. The sale price for the book was $3,750. A Dog's Tale first appeared in December 1903 in an issue of Harper's Magazine. In January of the following year, it was extracted into a standalone pamphlet published for the National Anti-Vivisection Society. Then in 1904, it was expanded into a book published by Harper and Brothers. So Twain had originally written A Dog's Tale at the request of his daughter, who was an opponent of vivisection, although his own hostility to the practice, his overall interest in animal welfare, it predated his writing the story many years. Uh, Mark Twain had once said, if you pick up a starving dog and make him prosperous, he will not bite you. This is the principal difference between a dog and a man. The dog is a gentleman. I hope to go to his heaven, not man's. The sixth book, or set of books, is a complete set of the Christopher Robin books by A. A. Mile. These were published in 1924, 1926, through 1928, and they were published by Methune. So the estimated value for these books is between $10,000 and $15,000. The sale price for the books was $11,250. Christopher Robin was based on the author's son, Christopher Robin, who later in life became disappointed about the use of his name. Uh, he once wrote in his autobiography, It seemed to me that my father had got where he was by climbing on my infant shoulders, that he had filched from me my good name and left me with nothing but empty fame. One of the poems, Vespers, which describes young Christopher saying his evening prayers, was said by Christopher as, the one work that has brought me over the years more toe-curling, fist-clenching, lip-biting embarrassment than any other. The seventh book is A Charlie Brown Christmas by Charles Schultz. It was published in 1965 by the World Publishing Company. The estimated value for this book is between $700 and $1,000. The sale price for this book was $1,000. $235. So most Christmas specials from the 1960s were based on classic pieces of literature or famous Christmas songs. A Charlie Brown Christmas broke that tradition by using famous cartoon characters to create an original story. Charles Schultz was reluctant to turn his penis comic strip into animation, but ultimately allowed Ford Motors to use the characters in a commercial in 1959. This inspired the special and later the book. So producers were initially doubtful about the one scene where Linus recites scripture since religious content was usually avoided in network Christmas programs. But Schultz insisted saying, if we don't do it, who will? The eighth book is Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. This was published in 1908 by L.C. Page and Company. The estimated value for this book is between $5,000 and $7,500.
the sale price for this book was $3,500. So this was Lucy Maud Montgomery's first novel, written in 1905. The book was rejected by every publisher Montgomery sent it to, so she stored it away in a hat box. In 1907, she reread the Anne of Green Gables manuscript and decided to send it out again. It was accepted by the Page Company of Boston. So Montgomery and her first boyfriend, Nate Lockhart, who was actually said to be part of the inspiration for Gilbert Blythe, used to pass letters to one another during school. Readers gave Montgomery grief over the death of Matthew Culford, and she later confessed that she regretted writing it that way and would have given Matthew more years if she'd have rewritten it. On the 100th anniversary of the publication of Anne of Green Gables, Montgomery's granddaughter Kate McDonald Butler wrote an essay in the Globe and Mail revealing that Montgomery's family believed that she had died by suicide. McDonald Butler said she decided to share the family secret to help reduce the stigma on mental health issues. Montgomery suffered depression throughout her life. Her husband had also suffered from depression throughout their marriage. Uh, their son found a piece of paper on her bedside table and the section of it said, May God forgive me, and I hope everyone else will forgive me, even if they cannot understand. My position is too awful to endure, and nobody realizes it. The ninth book is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. This was published in 1866 by Macmillan. The estimated value for this book was between 4000 $6,000. The sale price for this book was $15,000. Born Charles Ludwig Dodgson, the writer known as Lewis Carroll, was a Renaissance man of the Victorian era. Like a lot of writers, he was frustrated by losing the excellent ideas that inconveniently came in the middle of the night. So in 1891, he invented the nictograph. The device is a card with 16 square holes, two rows of eight, that offers a guide for the user to enter a shorthand code of dots and dashes. It was also considered useful for the blind. And he actually delivered the original story concept for Alice in Wonderland while on one of his boating trips with the Lydells, who were the children of his bosses. Henry Lydell, the Dean of Christ Church, Oxford, um, Alice is Alice Lydell, the Lori is Lorena Lydell, the Eaglet is Edith Lydell, the Duck was colleague, colleague Reverend Robinson Duckworth, and the Dodo was Dogson himself. The popular story is that he used the bird as his character because his stammer made him sometimes introduce himself as Dodo Dogson. Throughout his life he denied that Alice was based on any real life person. But A Boat Beneath a Sunny Sky, the poem at the end of Through the Looking Glass, is an acrostic that spells out Alice Plus and Slidell. And the tenth book is Blastic, I'm sorry, Black Beauty, His Grooms and Companions by Anna Sewell. This was published in 1877 by Gerald and Sons. The estimated value for this book is between $1,200 and $1,800. The sale price was $3,500. With 50 million copies sold, Black Beauty is one of the best-selling books of all time. Although Black Beauty is looked at as a children's novel, her purpose in writing the novel was to induce kindness, sympathy, and an understanding treatment of horses. Although the shift of perspectives was seen as good for some, it was also an issue to others, including horse owners and people who sold equipment for horses, like blinders. Writing in the Encyclopedia of Animal Rights and Animal Welfare, Bernard Unti calls Black Beauty the most influential anti-cruelty novel of all time. The depiction of the bearing rain in Black Beauty spurred so much outrage and empathy from readers that its use was not only abolished in Victorian England, but public interest in anti-cruelty legislation in the United States also grew significantly. 
The arguably detrimental social practices concerning the use of horses and black beauty inspired the development of legislation in various states that would condemn such abusive behaviors toward animals. And the next book is King Kong de De los Lovelace. This was published in 1932 by Grosset and Dunlap. Now the estimated value for this book is between $4,500 $6,000. The sale price was $7,280. Loveless was an American novelist who authored the original King Kong, published in 1932 by Grosset and Dunlap. This was slightly before the film was released. The original Kong, as written, is a far different cry from the one portrayed in the film. In fact, the original version of King Kong is about as depraved and violent as it can get. Several scenes of violence were removed from the U.S. prints of 1933's King Kong from 1938 and 1971. These scenes included Kong stomping on Skull Island natives, shaking sailors off a log to have them all fall to their deaths, and brutally chewing up an unsuspecting New Yorker. Though his image in pop culture today is more along the lines of a giant teddy bear, his original personification was actually a really wicked beast. And the twelfth book is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. This was published in 1892 by George Nunes. The estimated value for this book is between $1,200 and $1,800. The sale price was $2,250. This novel contains the earliest short stories featuring Sherlock Holmes, which have been published in 12 monthly issues of the Strand Magazine from July 1891 to June of 1892. The stories are collected in the same sequence and are all related in first-person narrative from Watson's point of view. In January of 1891, Doyle's publisher received two new submissions to the monthly from Doyle and described his reaction as, I at once realized that here was the greatest short story writer since Edgar Allan Poe. The stories proved popular, helping to boost the circulation in the magazine, and Doyle was paid 30 guineas each for the initial run of 12. The next book is Dracula by Bram Stoker. This was published in 1897 by Archibald Constable and Company. The estimated value is between $3,000 and $4,000. The sale price was $12,500. The original title for the novel was The Dead Undead. Count Dracula's original name was Count Wampir. He was inspired by the murderous Vlad of Wallachia, also known as Vlad the Impaler, and Countess Elizabeth Bathory. In Romania, Dracula is translated to dragon and devil. So Stoker started writing Dracula right after Jack the Ripper made headlines. He was also influenced by the Irish mythological fairies who developed a taste for blood. While writing, Stoker was influenced by European culture and adventure stories. Dracula was favored above Mary Shelley, Edgar Allan Poe, and Emily Bronte. The novel was actually under copyright until 1962, 50 years after Stoker's death. The next book is The Mysterious Island by Jules Verne. This was published in 1876 by Scribner. The estimated value for this book is between $1,500 and $2,500. The sale price for this book was $2,040. So this is the novel by James Verne, published in 1875. Uh, the original edition, published by Hetzel, contains a number of illustrations by Jules Verrett. Uh, this, this novel is actually a crossover sequel to Verne's famous 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which was published in 1870, and In Search of the Castaways, published between 1867 through 68. Um, now, its themes are different throughout these books, but there are discrepancies in the continuation between the novel 
and 20,000 Lakes Under the Sea. Um, so although this book was written in 1874, its events take place from 1865 to 1869. Now the events of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea takes place between 1867 and 1868. For example, the Captain Nemo appearing in this novel dies at a time when Captain Nemo in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was still alive. There's usually a note in most editions of the book uh, admitting date discrepancies, but there are also similar discrepancies in Search of the Castaways, although they're not often as pointed out. Um, another error is that Neb is depicted as Smith's former slave. But since Smith is identified as being from Massachusetts, where slavery was abolished in the 1780s, Neb would have never been a slave. But it was still a really good book. And the last one is The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. This was published in 1886 by Scribner and Sons. The estimated value for this book is between $3,000 and $4,000. The sale price for this book was $4,750. So Stevenson had long been fascinated with split personalities, but couldn't figure out how to write about them. Then one night he had a dream about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In the small hours of the morning, I was awakened by cries of horror from Lewis. His wife, Fanny, had said. Thinking he had a nightmare, I awakened him, and he said angrily, Why do you wake me? I was dreaming a fine bohe tale. So Stevenson later elaborated on the dream in an essay called A Chapter on Dreams. Uh, a lifelong invalid, Stevenson was sick with tuberculosis when he wrote the famous tale. He had recently suffered a lung hemorrhage and was under the doctor's orders to rest and avoid excitement, but that didn't stop him from cranking out the first draft of the 30,000 word book, and it was in somewhere between three and six days flat, and then a second rewritten draft in another like three days. More about that in, you know, in a minute, but Stevenson may have been drawing from a personal experience. See, it was reported that he was prescribed medicinal cocaine to treat a hemorrhage and that that inspired you know, the story during a cocaine-fueled slumber. He later professed an affection for the drug, and his crazy writing stint is actually consistent with someone on cocaine. So, those are the auction sales and values that I wanted to bring to you this week. I usually use heritage auctions, but I thought I would bring you some from Swan Auction House this week. Uh, Swan is a wonderful place to purchase and auction valuable books. So again, thank you for staying with me for another video. Um, if you like it, give me a like, a subscribe. It's encouraging, and I will see you next time. Take care.